witches, it's Taya. How are you today? Um, we're gonna talk about 13 signs that you might be a witch. Now, if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe so we can hang out again in another video. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. It's much appreciated. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna talk about 13 signs that you're a witch. Now, this is just a witch in general. If you wanna know the 13 signs to know if you're a traditional witch, leave me a comment below and uh, we'll see about putting that one together. But let's get started with the first sign that you might be a witch. Um, you feel a, the first sign is that you feel a connection to a specific deity or pantheon. Um, so for me, when I was younger, I was like, first I was obsessed with like the Aztecs. Then I was obsessed with like the Egyptians and the Egyptian pantheon, all the different Egyptian gods. And then I got like super into the Greek pantheon. And then finally I kind of ended up with the Celtic pantheon. But over time, I have always been very interested in, you know, I feel very connected with different um, pantheons and specific deities. So maybe you're having a calling there. Might be a sign you're a witch. Second sign, you feel the energies of others and your environment. So do you pick up on other people's energies very easily or the energies of the environment around you? I'm like that. Um, if I'm in a busy, like if I go to a mall or something and it's not COVID times, it's regular times and there's like people everywhere, it's very overwhelming for me. I pick up on all the energies of the people and in the environment around me. But if I'm out in nature where it's very serene, I feel just super connected to the energies there. Um, I'm what you would call a highly sensitive person. There's a great book. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. I meant to bring it with me. Um, it's called The Highly Sensitive Person. Check it out. Might be a sign that you're a witch. Number three, you feel at one with nature. Um, for me, I mean, I grew up on a farm. I, my, some of my fondest memories from when I was three and four years old is being out in nature, picking strawberries and raspberries and Saskatoon berries, playing with the chickens and the goats. <laughs> um, Later in life, when I bought my first home, the first thing I did was put in a 400 square foot garden in the backyard. Um, when my husband and I bought our house now in the suburbs, the first thing we did, the first thing we spent money on was redoing the backyard because I spend so much time outdoors in the summer here. Um, so being very at one with nature. Number four, you feel the moon energies and phases. So for me, um, I just, I've always know where the moon is. Um, throughout my life, I've always been able to sort of look up in the sky and pinpoint it, whether it's like, you know, during the day when you're the waxing or waning moon, you're close to that new moon, or at night when I'm kind of going to bed and I'm closing the windows, it's like, oh yeah, there's the moon. I've always been very in touch with that. Um, as a woman, my cycles sync with the moons. I tend to menstruate at the full moon. Um, and so I think that really gives me a good sense of what's going on with those moon cycles. So if you're very in touch with the moon energies and phases, you might be a witch. Number five, you have a sense of serendipity during big life events. Um, for me, it showed up when I found out at 21, I'd just gone back to university. My life was like on track. Everything's great. And I found out I was pregnant. And rather than being like disappointed or shocked or like, oh my God, I was like, Oh, and some part of my brain just went, it's meant to be. And I wasn't upset about it. It just, it was, it was just, it was a good thing. It was great. We're going to go with it. We're going to roll with it. I just knew in my heart of hearts that it was serendipity. Um, same thing with both my children's births. It was very, both of them were very physically traumatic. But again, it was like, I just knew that I needed to go through that because that was just the way it had to be. Um, when I met my husband, I just knew that that was my husband. Um, so if you've had that sense of serendipity during big life events, you might be a witch. Um, number six, does electri electricity go haywire around you? Um, for me, my whole life, if I'm ever driving at night, street lights tend to turn off. I'm driving down the street and literally all of a sudden a street light or another street light, they'll just turn off on me. Um, so maybe you have that kind of electricity going haywire around you. Maybe you're one of those people that can't wear a watch because it just gets drained, whatever. Um, does electricity go haywire? Um, number seven, you are drawn to the strange and unusual. Um, for me, that is a huge theme in my life. Um, like I mentioned in a previous video, you know, when I was a kid playing in a graveyard, <laughs> That seemed like a great idea to me. Um, I was obsessed with the Aztecs and their sacrifices, e Egyptians and mummification. Um, 
into, as a teen, I was super into like just reading about the occult and stuff. Um, and then as um, a young adult, my university degree is in physical anthropology and I studied human skeletal remains in an archeological context. I was obsessed, still am, with, with death, but not recent, not ooey gooey forensics, what's going on now. I'm talking about like in the past, what was happening, reconstructing past populations, looking at ske human skeletal remains to figure out what was going on in people's lives. I mean, I'm just fascinated by that. So maybe if you're drawn to the strange and unusual, maybe you're a witch. Number eight, do you have a life journaling habit? <laughs> Um, I, when I moved in with, uh, it was my second roommate, hi Shelly, and um, she had this beautiful journal that she kept. It was in a black sketch, a small black sketchbook, and I remember she would draw pictures and paste in pictures, and she would write about all the things that went on in her life. It was a very scrapbooky journal life record, and I was like fascinated. I'm like, I want that, so I started one too, and um, what that really morphed into in my later years was my Book of Shadows. Um, it was became my life record, the record of my life's work, and so maybe if you've got that journaling habit, maybe if you're that interested in documenting the things that happen in your life, you know, maybe that's the first step towards some record keeping in witchcraft. Number nine, you like to work with herbal concoctions. So as a kid, I loved making potions. I've talked before about the, you know, my little um, backyard apothecary where I had all of the, you know, I had all dried out all kinds of weeds and flowers and stuff and I would use them to make potions. Um, and then again, as an adult, I know I went through a huge phase where I made all my own like face washes and stuff like that. You know, it was all like herbal remedy type stuff. And now it's really for me about like aromatherapy and essential oils. I think I have one of every essential oil that's almost ever been made. <laughs> um, but again, I love making, mixing and mixing them together and making different like, you know, whether it's a perfume or it's an herbal remedy or it's for a spell. I mean, I just love aromatherapy. So maybe if you like working with herbal concoctions, maybe you're a witch. Number 10, you're able to change emotional vibrations in other people. So for me, that showed up as I've, um, more in my later life, not so much as a, I mean, I suppose I was very good at angering people when I was younger. That was my influence. I was very good at riling up my parents, um, especially my father. And we would come to like screaming matches and I knew just what to say to push those buttons. But more in my later life, it's gone the other way. And I'm very much the calming influence on people. Um, I'm very like high energy, but I know, I always just seem to intuitively know what to say, what to do to help other people calm, to help them reframe their, their perspective, to help them get a hold of what's going on in their life, almost a bit like a life coach. Um, <clears throat> so if you're able to change those emotional vibrations in other people, maybe you might be a witch. Number 11, you've cast a spell that actually works. Now, I know some of you are sitting here going, well, duh, if I was a witch, I'd cast a spell, but I don't know, am I a witch? Um, think of it this way, do you do daily affirmations? A daily affirmation is, in and of itself, a small spell. It's stating the same intention day in and day out, putting that out to the universe and waiting for it to manifest back. That is a spell. So if you're super into affirmations, might be a sign that you're a witch, right? If you're just sitting there every day saying, you know, mm, I, leave, I lead a life of abundance. I lead a life of abundance. Eventually, if that happens and you lead a life of abundance, you've cast a spell that worked. Um, so keep that in mind. Number 12, you study witchcraft and the occult. Um, that's a sign that you might be a witch. Now there's people that study the witchcraft and the occult who aren't necessarily witches, right? There's definitely people who like in academia who study that kind of thing, who maybe don't necessarily practice it themselves. But if that is something that you study, could be a sign that you're a witch. And finally, number 13, the biggest sign that you are a witch is that you do witchcraft or the occult, which sounds kind of silly, right? You're like, well, duh. But I think there's a lot of people out there who've started on a witchcraft path who are like, but I don't know, am I really a witch? Girlfriend, if you're doing the things that you need to do to be a witch, if you're doing spell work, if you're doing meditation, if you're doing um, ritual, if you're doing, you know, you're making talismans and amulets and that kind of stuff, you're making your, your potions, your herbal concoctions, if you're doing those sorts of things, that's a huge sign that you, my friend, just might be a witch.
So thanks for hanging out. Those are 13 signs that you might be a witch. Um, again, if you're interested in the 13 signs that you might be a traditional witch, leave me a comment and we'll look at that. Otherwise, make sure you hit subscribe so we can hang out in the next video. Mwah! Thanks so much, you guys.